So now that we've talked about what data is and different ways to classify data, we now need to go out and actually collect this data so we can perform statistics on it. And that's what section 1.3, collecting data, does. We're going to talk about five ways to collect data. And the first way is called random sampling. And this is just items that are selected by chance. So there's no specific methodology to selecting these items. So, you know, you can kind of think of, you know, drawing numbers from a hat. There's actually something called a random number generator, which sounds probably silly, but it's a list of random numbers that you can use to help pick things out. Now, whatever method you're using, a lot of times you want randomness within it. And when it comes to that, there's a special type of random sample called simple random sample. I'm going to explain it here so that you've heard it, but don't worry too much about it. But the key with simple random kind of just means there's no restrictions. So basically, every sample is possible among that size. So let's pretend we have three people. Let's pretend we have Alice, Betty, and Carol, but I just wrote A, B, C. And I want to take a sample of two people. Now, I can't take the same person twice, right? I can't have A, A, I can't have Alice and Alice do the task. But if I'm going to grab two people, then I can either have Alice and Betty, Alice and Carol, or Betty and Carol. And that's the only pairs that are possible. So if I'm randomly selecting them, so long as any of those can happen, it's a simple random sample. If I had some sort of rule, like, oh, if you get Alice that you cannot use Carol, they fight too much and you don't want to pair them up, then all of a sudden I'm limited in what I'm choosing and it's not simple random. I mean, it could be random who you chose first, but then you might have a restriction from there on out. But don't worry too much about that. A second sampling method is called convenient sampling. And this is where you use subjects that are easy to obtain. So it's not necessarily data that's already out there. That's what people always confuse it with. But it's just somehow easy for you to get the data from your group of people, your population, whatever it may be. So example, let's say that you're going to survey people as they walk out of a coffee shop. So this group of people is easy for you to get. You don't have to, you know, drive all over the state. And hopefully there's some randomness, like the height of everybody walking out of a coffee shop is random. They do all have the similarity that they like coffee, they can afford coffee. So you're losing some randomness, but it's really easy to get that population. A third method is called systematic sampling. And this is where you select like every kth item, where you start with some item between one and K, which at first might sound confusing. So let's look at an example so it makes a little bit more sense. In order to study the average amount of money spent at a fast food restaurant, the manager decides to record the total spent from every, randomly picks the number 12 from every 12th customer. So now we need to start with somebody within the first 12 customers. And in this case, she randomly decides to start with the third customer. And from there, she'll take every 12th person, every 12th customer. So for example, you know, that morning she stands by the cash register or she looks at the receipts from the third customer and then adds 12 to get the 15th customer adds 12 to get the 27th customer, adds 12 to get, you know, the 39th, et cetera, keep going, those customers. So there's some system to this approach, but, you know, we're hoping that there's still randomness within it, that, you know, not every 12th customer should be ordering the same thing, but this way you're getting a distribution like throughout the day.